So last chat, last section here really is just a few ratios to help you evaluate the business um, condition. You can think of this ad, that way. So gross profit, I briefly mentioned this last week already, just a brief review. Gross profit, as I mentioned earlier, the difference is between retail price and cost. We use that divided by net sales revenue to determine a percentage. Okay, gross profit percentage, there's no rule of thumb to these ratios. Basically, compared to the same business prior years, the higher the better. Okay, gross profit, we're understanding the relationship between net sales and the profit you gain between cost and retail price. Okay, so if an item was sold out, net sales is $1,000. If cost of goods sold is 500, then you have gross profit $500, and then you use 500 divided by 1,000. So that will give you 50, right, 0 0.5, which means for every dollar of sales, you're getting $0.5 of gross profit. So this ratio here, the higher the better. Whether or not the business is doing better, we need to compare it to prior season and also compare it to the same industry. Okay, so it's based on comparison. There's no rule of thumb, not like current ratio or debt ratio. Okay, so other ratios, this is related to cost and sales, the relationship between these two numbers. Other ratios, we want to also understand how quickly inventory is being sold out to customer. So inventory, the longer it stays in the business, the older it gets, and there's also more cost to store it. There's also cost to make sure there's probably insurance premium on the inventory. So the second ratio, rate of inventory turnover, evaluates how quickly inventory is transitioned from the business to customer's hands. So cost of goods sold expense, remember this represents cost of the inventory that's actually sold out to customer. So we want to understand the relationship between that and the average level of inventory that's in the business. So average inventory <coughs> represents the part that is not yet sold out to customer, and the numerator represents the part that is readily sold out to customer. So we want to understand the relationship between the two. This ratio at the end will give you how many times Cost of goods sold exceeds average inventory. Okay, so average inventory will measure this based on beginning inventory level plus ending divided by two. We want to figure out we're not just using beginning level to measure it or ending level. We want to just figure out an average level of inventory that's there in the business in the warehouse. Compare this against cost of goods sold value. The cost of goods sold represents the part that's sold out. Average inventory represents the part that's there in the warehouse. This ratio, again, the higher the better. Because if you think about it, the higher the ratio is, the numerator is higher than the denominator, and that represents the company actually has been selling cost of goods, selling inventory, turning it inventory into cost of goods sold very quickly. So the more rate that this process is, the quicker cost of goods sold, and the inventory turns into profit. Okay, so once again, <coughs> inventory, the purpose of purchasing it in, later on we want to sell it and to gain profit in between. So the quicker the ratio, okay, the quicker the inventory is being sold out to the customer, mm -hmm. the cost of goods sold expense account will be increasing. So this part here, the higher the better compared to average inventory level. So for example, you may have a beginning inventory, let's say $500, $500 of beginning inventory, and let's say your ending inventory is $1,000. So if you average them out, 1,500 divided by two, that will give you 750. And let's say your cost of goods sold is 1,500. The okay, cost of goods sold would be more than average inventory because remember, we have been constantly <coughs> purchasing new batches of inventory. So actually, if the ratio exceeds one, the higher it is, the better the company is doing because that means it, the inventory is being turned into gross profit quicker. So in that case, if we have cost of goods sold 1,500 in total divided by 750, the ratio here for rate of inventory turnover will be two times, meaning cost of goods sold is two times over average inventory. If next season it reaches 2.1 or 2.2, that means the company has been accelerating the process of 
selling items to customer. And so the higher the cost of goods sold is, that means the quicker the inventory is being sold out to customer and turning into profit. Okay, so for these problems, for using this ratio, the problem typically will tell you what is the beginning inventory level, what is the ending inventory level, and what is cost of goods sold expense in total. What you need to do is average out inventory, use it to divide cost of goods sold. That will tell you how many times cost of goods sold value exceeds inventory average level. And again, the higher the better. Okay, the last ratio here really relates to this as well. Just another angle to look at inventory. So some companies may be evaluating it based on rate of inventory turnover. Some companies may be looking at days in inventory. Okay. Inventory turnover ratio, once you have this, to calculate the following one is really easy. Once you have this inventory turnover rate, remember the two times or 2.3, 2.5, you use that ratio to divide 365. Okay, so this tells you, on average, what is the inventory cycle, the inventory <coughs> time period that stays in the population. Okay, so if you have 2.3 times, so you use 2.3 to divide 365, it gives you the number of days, on average, inventory is there in the warehouse, in your company. Okay, so if on average it's 159 days, so that's about five months, that means on average the inventory cycle from the time point it purchase in, it's purchased in up to the time point it's being sold out to customer, on average it stays in the business for about five months. And so as opposed to inventory rate, turnover rate, the higher the better, this part here, since it's measuring the number of days, the less number of days, the better. Okay, because you definitely want the inventory to be turnover to be sold out to customer quicker. So if the turnover rate this year is 2.3, if next year is 2.5, we're accelerating the rate, so the number of days will be shrinking. If next year it goes to 1, then you will have 365 days, which means inventory usually on average stays in your corporation for a year before it's being sold out. So that's definitely a red flag, uh, a sign that company is not selling the product as soon as they can, or it's a sign that they purchase too much inventory. So they have too much, too high level of inventory there. That also incurs the cost of storage, incurs the cost of insurance premium on it. Okay, so turnover rate is a way to look at how quick the inventory is being sold out by comparing cost of goods sold against, um, against the inventory on average value. So this part, the higher the better. If you use that to divide 365, Days in inventory gives you the cycle of inventory, the time period that it's in the company on average. <coughs> so the numbers here, ideally, the lower the better. And one thing on all these ratios, keep in mind that it's based on comparison. So you're comparing, there's no specific days that's considered good, no specific rate turnover rate that's considered good for each and every industry is kind of different. So you have to compare it in with your same business and also across the industry. But just a general trend, if gross profit rate is increasing, that's a good sign. Inventory turnover rate, if it's increasing, that's a good sign. Days in inventory, if it's decreasing, because it represents the number of days inventory is in the company. So the longer it is, that means it's growing obsolete, <coughs> basically uses up storage cost as well. So you want it to be sold out to customer quicker.
The inventory management for merchandisers company actually is very important. Okay, so the coverage is not as much for this course. Other courses you may also be learning what is the right point to replenish inventory, and what is the appropriate amount to keep, because having too much inventory, you may have it stayed in your warehouse for too long period of time. If you're having too less, you may have customer coming in to purchase something, but they don't have the product there. Okay, so somewhere in the middle that matches with your customer's purchasing pace and also how you turn <coughs> over the inventory is actually a very, it's actually very critical and a key to a merchandiser's company. So these are just some of the ratios to evaluate how well they're doing this. Okay, are they having excessive <coughs> amount of inventory? Or are they having just right? Or are they actually having too less of inventory? That can be actually evaluated by these ratios.